Lights on. Lights off. Lights on. Lights off. Oh, hold on. Lights on. How comfortable life has become, ladies and gentlemen. In this case, just by turning the lights on and off by clapping my hands. And this sensor technology is not only a useful helper at home, but also on the road. And to help us take a look into the future of automated driving, we've invited the head of the self-driving car project at Continental. Here is André Hum. André. Hi, Chris. Good to see you. Great Glad to, to have you. Yeah. And I see you brought a bag along with a lot of uh, interesting devices. Exactly. What's that about? You talked about sensor technology, and I have brought some, some more examples about sensors we have in everyday life. Very yeah. good. So, for example, you have that movement sensor. Right. You know that maybe from switching lights on and off. Yes. You have that electric soap dispenser. Yeah, you see them very often in public, public toilets. Toilets, for example. We have that nice example, which already is here. Trash can opens automatically. So give it a try. So maybe next time, yeah. <laughs> and a very nice example, that automated vacuum cleaner. Now I got to tell you, this look, kind of looks like the content of my girlfriend's handbag. Actually, this is the handbag of my girlfriend. No. no, just kidding. This is a very nice example. We have that vacuum cleaner and it operates automatically. So if I start it, yeah, then it goes along. Oh, whoa, whoa. cleans your table. You don't have to be careful because it detects automatically if there is any danger. <laughs> danger of falling off. That's amazing. So, you see? It stops automatically and if there's the danger of falling off the table, it just stops automatically and nothing happens. Really great technology. These are just nice examples for devices mm -hmm. who use sensors to um, take a look about what is going on in their environment. Mm -hmm. yeah? So you're telling me you're using the same technology in this uh, vacuum robot uh, for, your, for your cars? No, this is just an example. But of course, for vehicles, we need a bunch of different sensors. Yeah? If you're driving manually, yeah, you watch the road ahead of you and you react accordingly. Right. Yeah? And if a car wants to go without a driver, it also has to monitor the road ahead of you. Is there any obstacle? Is there any pedestrian? And where are the lane markings you want to follow? This has to be done automatically, and therefore, we need sensors. So what do these components and the sensors actually look like? Shall we take a look at them? If we can, give it a try. Oh! That's great, isn't it? That is great, Andre. I thought you were going to get more stuff out of your bag, but uh, this is fantastic. What do we have here? Let's take this example. This is a very exciting device. It's a stereo camera. Mm -hmm. yeah? And like you have two eyes, which gives you a perfect ability to see what's going on ahead and at the road uh, uh, in front of you. It has two lenses yeah? and it can do the same thing. It's mounted behind the windscreen and it can see if there is someone on the road, where are the lane markings, so that the car can get a lot of information about what is right to do next. Fantastic, what is this place about? It's a very exciting device, it's a radar sensor. Yeah? It sends out electromagnetic waves, gets feedback from that, and with that it can detect, for example, the velocity of other vehicles in a very precise way, much more precise than you can do with your eyes. So that means we have these sensing components that basically gather all kinds of information from the road, from the surroundings, um, what happens with all this data? So this data then is all collected in one point. And this is a kind of central in, in, in intelligence. It's a central brain we have in the car, collecting all this information, mm -hmm. putting it together, and then at the end be able to make decisions. So basically, you're t telling me this component right here decides whether to brake or to move over to the left or to the right. Um, and to avoid accidents. Exactly. This is a highly functional brain in the vehicle. Yeah? And like you, when you're driving manually, make your decisions in your brain, right. it does that in an automated vehicle. Awesome. So we have uh, one example here. This is a brake system. So if the decision here is hit the brakes, mm -hmm. you have to have a device who really hits the brakes because there's no driver anymore. And this device can do exactly that. It actuates the brakes so that in a very fast way, the vehicle can, for example, decelerate if you have a dangerous situation. And we have a development vehicle where we put all this technology together in one car. This is our self-driving car. This is the car we're doing our development work around driverless technology. I'm looking forward to when we're talking about automated driving. I'd like to thank you, first of all, for all the information. There's one more thing we have to do, though, before I let you go, and that is take a quick picture. Oh, looking forward to this. You are, I know. You probably heard of this. Cheese! So once again, thank you for showing us what you can do with things you find in a random handbag. And also thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. And be sure to tune in again for the next episode of The Garage with more technologies and new innovations from Continental.